is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is Eric and today it's time to review the fourth CD in the box set. 100 million Bon Jovi fans can't be wrong. We're working our way through this box set and it's time to do the last CD in the US release. I believe there is one more though in the Japanese edition. So look forward to the fifth CD review after this one. But today we're going to talk just about CD number four. And through the first three CDs, I have been blown away. And I, of course, I listened to this album back in 2004 and I've owned this ever since then. But I was blown away from day one at the quality of some of these songs. When you're thinking this is going to be a bunch of unreleased stuff, not that great. No, no, no. There are songs on here that absolutely should have been on albums. It is an absolutely incredible box set. And now we're going to jump into CD4. Overall, CD4 might be my least favorite of the four, but it still has some amazing tracks. So let's go ahead and jump into it. We're not going to mess around today. Track number one, Love Ain't Nothing But a Four-Letter Word. For some it's for better, for some it's for worse. Love ain't nothing but a four-letter word. Love ain't nothing. I absolutely love this song. Now, it's a serious topic about escaping the cycle of an abusive relationship, but it's still a fantastic song. It's got a great hook, very strong lyrics. It's such a powerful song, but musically, it's also really catchy. Like this song could have been about anything and it still would have been awesome. The key change at the end is awesome. And the overall feel of this song is just amazing. Now I will be reviewing in this particular segment, both tracks one and track two, because they're the same song. Track one is the unreleased version. Track two is the original demo. I think that track one does sound a little more refined, a little more ready for an album. Track two sounds more like a demo, but there is some different guitar riffs that are actually pretty cool. So they both have their kind of unique feel about them. I would say that the second song does have a different pre-chorus, and I do prefer the pre-chorus from the first track, but both are pretty cool, and both the lyrics are a little bit different. So they definitely changed some things, and that's why they're both included on here, I'm sure, because they're pretty different, but the same song. And I absolutely love the song, either way. I, I slightly prefer track one, the unreleased version. I would say that that version is probably a nine and a half, and track two, maybe closer to a nine. But as a song itself, I'm just gonna say nine and a half, because the demo version was never intended to be the final version anyway, so can't hold them accountable for that. At the end of the day, love this song. I love that it's meaningful and also kicks ass. But some of the lyrics are just incredible. And hopefully this song helped uh, some people who listened to it and were in a tough situation. Maybe this song kind of inspired them to get out of that situation. Not really sure, but at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, just a great Bon Jovi song and a deep and important Bon Jovi song. Everybody knows the promise of the river. Everybody goes with the Track three is one of my favorite songs on the entire box set. Just a beautiful acoustic guitar, amazing vocal delivery. And I love how the second verse hits when the entire band comes in with the drums. The electric guitar has that little riff in the background. It's just absolutely beautiful. How this song has never made an album, I have no clue. Since the very first time I heard it, I knew this was a freaking masterpiece. And it's so awesome because like every single CD on this box set has at least one song that just stands out like that is an absolute hit right there. It's amazing. It would have been my favorite song even on a regular album or one of my favorites. You have CD1 with the radio Save My Life Tonight as well as Miss Fourth of July. CD2 has Starting All Over Again. CD3 has Edge of a Broken Heart. And CD4, we have River Runs Dry. An absolutely brilliant song. 10 out of 10 all day long. brings us to the demo for always and you know it's always uh no pun intended uh interesting to hear demo versions of big hit songs years after the original song was released so sometimes i even prefer the demo like someday i'll be saturday night this one is really cool it's got a bit more of a groove to it the drums drive it a little more than the original and john's vocals are on point just amazing the main difference i think is that this song has a key change. It actually changes keys, which is cool, but definitely better that they didn't keep that there. It would have been really tough live, especially now, which I don't even think he can sing always at all now. So that's really sad, but that key change would have given him trouble even in his 
prime, but it does bring some freshness to the song to hear something new, a different take on it, even though it's not really a different take on it. It's just the demo, the original take on it, if you will. But I can hear a little bass line doing something different that we don't hear in the album. Every instrument does something slightly different. And so it's really cool to listen to. I would say this song doesn't quite have all the magic and everything that the original version that the final cut had, but that's because this is a demo. So I think they improved it. I would say the this song is a 10 out of 10. I would like to give this a 10 out of 10. But honestly, if this version we have here was on the album, I'd probably give it more like a nine out of nine of nine, probably nine and a half out of 10 because it doesn't quite have the magic. But again, still a beautiful song, still awesome. And I never really reviewed always because it's on Crossroad, but uh, kicks ass, amazing, brilliant, genius, awesome song, great love song and love it. So just wanted to throw that out there. I'm going to go ahead and give it a nine and a half out of 10 for this particular version of Always, but it is a demo. So keep that in mind. Next up, Kidnap an Angel. Pretty cool song. Really nice, pleasant acoustic guitar in the verse. Then the chorus hits. It's moderately catchy. It's never been one of my favorites. I don't think it has a, an awesome hook or anything, but relatively fun to listen to, and I enjoy this one. I can see how it maybe got left off of an album, but still like it quite a bit. In fact, it's got pretty much everything I want. Builds up to a chorus. It's got a cool pre-chorus. It's got a cool verse. It's got a cool chorus with, some, with a little bit of catchiness to it. I just don't think it's just an amazing song or one of Bon Jovi's best or anything like that. But uh, I like how the drums bring, bring it in with this, I could kidnap an angel. And the, the drums really drive that part right there. That cliff on his wings. So uh, really nice lyrics. Quality song, really quality song. Don't get me wrong. Um, I would say probably about an eight out of 10 on this one, which is very good. Feeling inside is feeling like I take a breath. Let it out. Track six, B-Side Breathe. This one uh, is apparently a B-Side, but I don't think I had heard it until I got this box set. And I even had to go back and listen to it before doing this review because I'm like, breathe, which one is that? Like, I wasn't even sure which one it is, which is not a good sign. That's very rare for a Bon Jovi title that I don't even know. Like, I can't even sing it to myself. Like, which one is that? Once I heard it, it came back to me. I was like, oh, this one. And it has a pretty decent groove. It's not something that I just skip or I'm like, oh, I hate this song. But it doesn't really stick with me. It doesn't really stick with me. The chorus is not that catchy for me personally, but there's nothing awful about it. I just don't really love this song. It doesn't really work for me like some of the others. So all I'm going to say is not trash. It's not like a three, but probably more like a six to me for Breathe. Sorry. I need protection on the underground. I'm going down, 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 out of bounds. But that brings us to Out of Bounds. You can cross that line out of bounds. It's out of time. This song is awesome. It's got like a drum machine that just keeps the steady beat, which of course is not ideal, but it's got this kick-ass guitar riff. You hear those 80s vocals with that grit. Pretty damn cool from John. And this song is freaking awesome. It's got a raw sound and everything, but I kind of like this version, but I would have loved to hear a complete version, a complete studio version of this thing with you know your guitar solos and your drum fills and everything else. Love the lyrics though. I need protection on the underground. I'm going down, 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 down. And uh, you know, the chorus doesn't have the biggest hook in the world, but still pretty damn awesome. In fact, I've thought about like recording a little guitar solo on top of it myself, just for my own purposes. So when I listen to it, it has a cool guitar solo and maybe I'll do that like for a video or something on the channel. But this is, feels like just that quick demo. You wrote the song, you like it. Let's, let's, let's throw it on tape. Let's record it real quick. You start your drum machine and you just play the riff and then you sing it on top of it. It's kind of, there is a bass, but the bass doesn't do too much other than just kind of follows the guitar. So it's really basic, but still awesome. And I think like if they recorded this as a final version, it probably could have been a nine and a half, 10. For this particular version, I still love it. I love the rawness of it. I'm going to say eight and a half out of 10 because never really heard the entire version. So, you know, you need proper drums, you need fills, you need everything else to really make it work completely. But just as for a, a quick demo, damn, love out of bounds. Maybe something would be on New Jersey. I'm not sure which era this was recorded, but really cool song. Nobody wants you. Next 
Next up is one called Letter to a Friend. This song reminds me when I hear the verses, it reminds me of a song on Destination Anywhere called It's Just Me. It almost has the same melody, except it's a little bit faster. Uh, I actually like It's Just Me better. I think it's got a really cool, spooky vibe. I like it a little bit better. This song is pretty cool. It feels like it takes forever to get to the chorus. Like the verse just goes on and on and on. It's like, dude, are we getting a chorus on the horizon or what? Um, but when it does and then you finally get it, it's like, okay, it's okay. Lyrics aren't anything mind blowing. It's like, it's like nobody wants you like I want you. No one needs you like I need you. Um, you know, okay. I just didn't feel a great hook in this song. Definitely something I would have kept off the record too if I was them. So I get that. But hey, it's a box set with unreleased stuff. So what can you expect? You're going to have some of these. Still some cool guitar riffs. Not a total trash either. Just not a favorite of mine. I'll give it a six and a half out of ten. Next up is Temptation, a little slower groove. Got a kind of House of the Rising Sun feel. You can't miss it. Every time I hear this song, I start going, There is a house down in New York. They call the rising sun. But then the actual song gets going like, oh no, this is Bon Jovi, I forgot. So uh, it, it took some time to grow on me. Never loved this one. Kind of got to be in the right mood for it. I mean, I like the background vocals, the ooing that goes on in the background, it, the chorus and everything. And it's it's got like a hollow feel in the sound production, I think intentionally. Uh, it's got a pretty cool little sound. I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's terrible and, and it does have a kind of spooky vibe. So it's not a, your typical Bon Jovi song. It's not typically the Bon Jovi song I'm looking for. But still a cool track. I, I can't give it a really high score for me. Some people will love this song. I mean, this is a it takes a, a certain, like I said, a certain mood you gotta be in. But I'm gonna say seven out of ten for temptation. Well, you gotta have a reason. One reason to. Up next, gotta have a reason. Slow song, acoustic guitar, a lot of potential there. I think the verses are really nice. I think the pre-chorus is really nice, and then it hits a pretty big chorus. This particular recording is mostly acoustic guitar, some drums, maybe some bass. I'm not really sure, but it's obviously not a full studio type recording. But the hook is there. It's typical Bon Jovi. So it's a really good song. Just typical Bon Jovi. You know, you got your beautiful verse, like I said, catchy pre-chorus and big chorus. And that's all you can ask for. It's exactly what I want. That's why I really like it. It's just not quite at the level of some of the other Bon Jovi ballads, even one that I'm going to get to a little later on this disc. Although, of course, with a full band, full instruments and everything, maybe we'd be a little closer to that level. I'm not really sure. As for this version, I'm going to say an 8 out of 10. I really like it. I think this is a beautiful song. I think it's really well written. Good performance, good vocals, very solid song. Gotta have a reason. Next up, we have one, All I Wanna Do Is You, okay? And this is a fun song. It's got a cool groove. I can see why they wouldn't put this on an album, but it does have a, a really fun and cool, catchy groove the entire way through. It's a song I feel like might fit on Crush, even though most albums, it probably wouldn't really have a place. Like, this would not fit on these days. It would sound way out of place. Uh, it'd be a fish out of water on these days. But maybe on Crush, it could work, and it may be a Crush outtake. It kind of sounds like it is. I'm not sure. But it's a fun song. Great lyrics. It's got kind of a 50s, 60s feel with your modern instruments and modern electric guitar distortion and all that, but it's still got that Bon Jovi feel. I would compare it to Captain Crash and the Beauty Queen from Mars, which is a song I really like on Crush. I think I slightly prefer Captain Crash over this one, but it's got a simple, a similar kind of feel, and it'll hit those guitar, dan, 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 and uh, it just grooves all the way through. It's just a fun song, just a fun song. So nothing wrong with this one. I think I like Captain Queen a little better. That one's about an eight and a half. So I'll say this one is an eight. Next up, we have Billy, Billy, and uh, this is a cool song. I've always liked this one. It starts out with a full band. It just kicks ass right from the beginning. Guitar riff, awesome. Lyrics come in, and I'm like, right from the beginning, yeah, this is going to be good. Always a pleasure to hear it, because I kind of forget about this one. It's kind of late in a box set, so you don't really think about this song. But whenever I happen to come across it, or I hear it in a, a, a random mix or something, I always like, oh yeah, this song is awesome. The chorus is short. It's not like the biggest hook in the world, but it's really fun. It's really cool. Song doesn't mess around. Goes straight back into another verse. 
boom, boom, boom. The structure is there. It's got some, I think there's a guitar solo in it. I'm not sure if not, there's some stills an awesome guitar little interludes in there. It's the kind of song you need at this point in the CD if you're listening to it straight through though. It's been a little while since we had a real rocker. And I guess going back four or five tracks back to Out of Bounds. But the song is awesome. It's not the best song in the world, but it's it's simple, great rock. I love the title, Billy, Billy, it's just so hard to explain. The chorus is pretty damn catchy, actually, now that I'm singing it myself, even though, yeah, it's not the catchiest ever written, but still a lot of fun. Definitely a solid 8.5, pushing nine, pushing, you know what? Nine for Billy. Hero, but I tear down the stars from the sky. And then we have the last track listed here. Nobody's Hero, unreleased, beautiful ballad, piano ballad, got some acoustic guitar in there. Love this one from first listen and great lyrics. And most people can relate to it in some kind of way. The buildup is incredible, but the standout is definitely John and Richie's vocals and the harmonies there. So this features that, something we have missed dearly for the past almost 10 years now. Can you guys believe it's been almost 10 years since Richie's been out of the band? Structure is great in this song. And this is the one I was talking about earlier when I said I'd talk about one more ballad. I think would if they had recorded a final cut of this and put it on an album, it might be compared to some of their great hits, some of the, you know, the Better Roses and the Always and, you know, the This Ain't a Love Song, you know, list them out. All these great love songs, of course, going back to, you know, Never Say Goodbye and all these great songs. So, I think this compares. Is it as good? It's hard to say without hearing, you know, a final cut, but this particular version is still amazing. It's beautiful. I think it's close. I think it's close. I think it might, it probably would be a top 10 Bon Jovi ballad. If I made a top 10 Bon Jovi ballads, it would, pretty sure it would make that list. Can't say 100% because there's so many, but I think it would. So very awesome song, beautiful song, pushing a 10. I'm going to say 9.5 for this particular version, but again, if they recorded one for an album, refined it a little bit, I think it could easily be a 10. And that is it, except, no, that's not. A hidden track, a hidden track to talk about. Living on a Prayer. And yes, the demo of Living on a Prayer is on this box set. This is the version that John listened to back in the day. He was like, nah, you know what? That song's not that great. Let's not put it on Slippery When Wet. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> you serious? Luckily, somebody told him, bruh, this is a hit. And that someone was right. This song is 100%. You listen to it, it's a hit. I don't care. I, I truly believe if I never heard this song in my life and someone played this demo for me, I'm like, damn, that song kicks ass. It really does. This one's a little different. Instead of the bass line that goes, you know, it's actually like a guitar riff. Something like that. A little off. But it's a guitar riff that kind of drives it instead of the bass. And it's pretty sick. And again, you hear the same song, but a little fresh take. Still a kick-ass song. Really love, of course, Living on a Prayer is a hit and a 10 out of 10 all day. Doesn't matter what version for the most part. Well, maybe because, you know, there's some of the slower versions like, you know, the this, this Left Feels Right or the Prayer 94 version on Crossroad. Those are a little different. Those are really different takes. But as for this version, it's pretty much the same song. A little bit rougher around the edges, a little more raw, but it's there. And it's awesome. And even here's the, the lyrics will change a little bit. There's a part where it says, just hang tough and we'll make, I love that. Just hang tough and we'll make it, I swear. That's cool. That's cool. I like those lyrics. So you, you get a fresh take on something. I love that. I love that. I wish more bands would release their demos after the fact. And uh, it's pretty damn cool. So this song, of course, 10 out of 10 all day. It's living on a prayer. And overall for CD4, it's not one of my favorites. But I still give it a solid 8 out of 10 for this CD. And overall, this entire box set, I mean, I guess you have to consider expectations and what it is. It's not made to be a fresh album that, of new songs that kick ass. If it was, well, there wouldn't be freaking this many songs, however many you have on here, freaking, I don't even know how many, 60 songs or so. But even if we just say the overall quality, okay, it would be a pretty good album. That's what's crazy. The unreleased stuff, it'd be a pretty damn good album. But when you take into account that this is supposed to be just unreleased stuff, to me, this is like a 10 out of 10 for what it's supposed to be. 
giving us a glimpse into some of their demos from the past, giving us a glimpse of some songs that we we already know that are hits and getting to hear the demo version, other songs that never got released, even some that have a demo version and an alternate version, an unreleased version. We have just everything on here. Some songs that are just acoustic guitar and nothing else. Some songs that have a drum machine. Some songs that are album ready. Songs like, I would say, The Edge of a Broken Heart is completely album ready. That should have been, this is the version. It's complete. It's awesome. Didn't make the album. I know that has been released before this, but I'm just saying, that's my point. Everything is on here. You get a little of everything. Even (laughs) Open All Night, three different or two different versions of Open All Night. So, um, and we have three total because there's one on bounce. So this is just a super amazing box set. And I believe we're getting another box set on the 40th anniversary. And I'm not really sure what it's going to contain, but I'm really looking forward to it. But this is an amazing, amazing box set, right? I was just, when I got this in 2004 and first listened to it, I was like, oh my God, this thing is freaking, I was hanging onto it like this because it's so freaking amazing. But um, there is one more CD on the Japanese edition. I've been requested to review that, so I will do that as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think of these 13 tracks. Standouts to me. Love ain't nothing but a four-letter word. River Runs Dry is my favorite on here. Always, of course. Out of Bounds all day. Gotta have a reason all day. All I want to do is use. Pretty fun. Billy and Nobody's Hero. Well, actually, I don't know why I said I didn't like this album at the beginning, but you know what? There's a few that I just don't care for. I guess that's why I said that. Um, not that I don't like this album, but I said this CD4 might be my least favorite. I'm not really sure about that, though. But some that I don't love are like Letter to a Friend, Temptation, uh, Kidnap an Angel. Is, is, it's decent. It's decent. So those are a few that are, are okay. So there you have it, ladies and gents. Let me know what you think down below. Please hit that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe. And we'll see you.